Dr. Weber back again, and we are going to talk about using the FET Lab kit in order to um, look at resistors and capacitors now in alternating current circuits. Okay, so again, be sure you're matching up your pictures in the lab um, participation section with what you're actually building. Very important that you use the right values for everything. Okay, so and make sure that the placement of where you're placing everything is correct. So let's look at this circuit build. All right, and so I've got um, my AC power source, click on it. I need 100 volts, a frequency of 0.1 hertz, and we're not gonna worry about the phase shift, just set it to zero, okay? I've got a resistor in here, 10 ohms, a capacitor of 0.5, 0 0.05 farads, sorry. And then um, I've got a switch here. I put this current probe right here. I've also got a current chart on the corner here. And I've got my volt chart, voltmeter chart across my capacitor. Okay, so watch what happens when I close the switch. Watch the current and the voltage, what happens. Cool. So I have, the voltage oscillating back and forth between 100 volts, which is the um, quantity that I am supplying with my voltage source here. And then I see that the current is also oscillating. It looks like it's achieving some kind of maximum value near around three amperes. And, um, and you look at how these charts compare to each other, the time is lined up with each other. So when this volt uh, chart, when the voltage is passing through zero here, then my current seems to be reaching around there just at its maximum value. So it looks like our voltage and our current are offset from each other, okay? When the current passes through zero, maybe the voltage uh, across my capacitor here reaches its maximum amplitude or something near that, okay? Now, um, maybe it's kind of hard to read exact values off of these charts here, which is why I placed in the probe for the current here so I can look at the values. And you see how it is oscillating back and forth between somewhere around minus three amperes and positive three amperes. Well, I guess it's not giving us a negative value, but it's oscillating somewhere between um, on either side of three amperes, okay? If reaching a maximum amplitude of at least three amperes. Now, um, so the um, part of this lab that you want to think about is uh, ask you a question about how the voltage and the current are um, changing compared to each other. And then I'm also asking you a question about calculating the impedance of the circuit. So we have a capacitor resistor circuit. We practiced how you find the impedance of these circuits. So you're going to calculate the impedance of it just find that calculation, okay? And then you are going to see if this impedance matches what you could find experimentally from this circuit. So how do you find your impedance experimentally? Well, I've got the equation behind me here. We know that the maximum potential difference in our circuit has to equal the maximum current times the impedance. Now, the maximum potential difference is what's being supplied by our current source. So we've got 100 volts here. Um, now, if I look at my current probe, I see that it's reaching a maximum value of somewhere near about 3 amperes. Maybe it looks like 2.98 amperes. Okay, so that's the value that I'm going to use for I max. And so I've got the equation behind me here, but you can solve V is equal to I max times Z. Solve that for I max. So, or sorry, not for I max, we want to solve it for Z, right? So I've solved it for the wrong quantity here. So I want to take this equation and solve it for Z. So then Z, our impedance, is going to equal the maximum uh, voltage in my circuit, which is 100 volts, divided by the maximum current that I'm getting with my probe here. So the impedance I should find is going to be um, whatever the power source voltage was divided by the maximum current that I'm getting with my probe here, okay? And so you're going to compare what you calculated with what you could get out of the impedance by your measurement here and make sure, hopefully, that they are near the same value, okay? 
Now we're gonna do a similar thing for an inductor. So I'm gonna keep everything as it is. I'm going to open my switch. I'm gonna remove my capacitor and stick in an inductor. And I want this inductor to have an inductance of 22 Henry's. Stick it in there. Okay, stick across my probes here. Let's make sure, okay, everybody's at zero. Um, now, uh, oh, I need to be sure I have 22 Henry's right here, right? Um, power source stays the same, 100 volts, 0.1 hertz. Um, resistance here is still at 10 ohms. And watch what happens when I close the switch. And again, we see that the uh, voltage and the current are offset. Maybe they're offset in a different way than how they were in the capacitor circuit. So think about that and write about that in this lab write-up or in, in this um, um, participation part of the lab, which I'm asking you to do. And then uh, I see that at least in this current, this circuit, my maximum current is a little bit different. Okay, um, and so my maximum current that I'm getting running through my my circuit here was not the near three amperes is what we found for the capacitor circuit but instead it's somewhere around near 5.9 or something like that 5.8 something amperes here okay and so i'm going to use my current measurement here and i'm going to use um, the fact that i'm starting with 100 volts here for my power source in order to figure out what is the impedance of the circuit using my measurements and what is the impedance of the circuit if I actually calculate it using the um, formula that I provided in the tables in the pre-lab, okay? Um, and so that's what we're looking at here and yeah, pay attention to your current and voltage charts there. Now, finally, we have one more experiment to do here. And I'm gonna leave this one as it is and look at this next one here. Okay, so this one might look a little bit complicated. This is the final activity. Um, be sure again that you've got everything set up. We've got a bunch of devices here that we're gonna use to take measurements just like we would if we were in lab. Okay, that's why this is a really cool uh, functionality that we have. So now we have 100 volt AC source, 0.1 hertz frequency, and we've got a resistor here, 10 ohms, inductor 22 Henry's, capacitance 0.5 farads. Now I've been playing around with this, and so I need to discharge everybody here. So we start clean, and I'm only going to bring in my current probe, my current chart, and my voltmeter here, okay? So the thing about your current probe and your current chart, those can be anywhere around the circuit since these are um, a series circuits. Doesn't matter where I take my current measurement, the maximum current's gonna be the same throughout here. But the voltage across each one of these um, elements is different. And I'm gonna use my volt probe here in order to help me with that, okay? So what you're gonna do is you are going to fill out a chart Let's look at that chart. Here, where you're going to calculate the impedance of the resistor on its own, the capacitor on its own, and the inductor on its own, okay? And then you're gonna calculate this quantity delta V max, okay? And so you're gonna get the maximum potential across that element by taking the maximum current in your circuit times this calculated impedance that you had here. So you're gonna take, you're gonna see what is the maximum current in your circuit, multiply it by the impedance you calculated here, that's this delta V max calculated. Okay. Then our delta V max measured, you're gonna take your voltmeter and measure the um, potential difference across each of your elements. And hopefully that quantity matches what you calculated. That's what we're checking for, okay? So, um, Let's do that. Let's look back at our circuit. Okay, so I'm gonna close the switch. Okay. And now we see our current is oscillating. 
I've got quantities for my current here so I can read off of my probe what is the value for the maximum current achieved in this circuit, okay? And so I can read that off. You'll have to watch it a few times to go through just to be sure you catch it. And um, I didn't uh, pay, uh, pay much attention to it earlier, but you can see how the charges are building up across the plates. Whenever the current is in one direction, you get a different sign of charge building up on the plates than when the current is moving in the other direction. Okay, now we're gonna take our volt probe here and I'm gonna place it across my resistor. And remember how we were talking about in the pre-lab that the voltage across these elements are, is gonna fluctuate as well since we have an alternating current power source. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna watch and wait and see when that voltage reaches a maximum value, okay? And that will be delta V max across this element. So for the resistor, that looks like it's gonna be around 48, ohm, or 48 volts or so, okay? You're gonna do the same thing across the inductor. What is the maximum voltage across our inductor? And then we're gonna do the same thing across our capacitor. Okay, so you see that the capacitor, the maximum voltage across it is much different than it is across the inductor than it is across our, um, our resistor, okay? So you're gonna get those quantities. Hopefully they match up uh, with what you calculated based on I max and the impedance of the circuit elements, okay? And then let's see, what else do we have to do? Let me have a follow-up question. What is the sum of the maximum voltages across your circuit elements? How can you reconcile this sum with the maximum voltage of the AC voltage source? So remember, this is what we talked about in um, the pre-lab, the final question on the pre-lab, is that um, if I sum up all the voltage drops across each of these elements, the maximum voltage drop across each of these elements, summing them up, it's going to be greater than what's actually being supplied by my power source here. That's because um, if we were to place one of these voltmeters across each one of these elements and watch how they change at the same time, the shape of the sinusoidal graph are going to be offset from each other. So if I place this um, voltmeter across any one of my elements at any time, if I had three of them, I could place three, um, one on each of these elements and we would see that the sinusoidal graph is the amplitudes are different and the phase is offset from each other so if you add them up at any one time they are going to add up to be 100 volts but if you add up the maximum voltage across them um, then that's always going to be higher than the um, total voltage supplied by our power source here okay and that's a special thing that happens because of alternating currents